All right. I got the creepy uh, voice ever. <laughs> you guys heard that too. Yeah. Recording the process. <laughs> So like one of uh, Mark Zuckerberg's reptilians. But <laughs> hey guys, how's it going? Um, Ross, Johnston, Joel, thank you for coming on Red Liberty Media. Um, really appreciate you guys being our guests today. And uh, guys, for everybody watching, they are part of a movement called California Will Be Saved. And Ross, I know you're the kind of the founder of it. Um, well, you say God's, God will be the founder, but he obviously <laughs> used you as a vessel. Guys, would you go ahead and introduce yourself for everybody? Yeah, yeah my name is Ross. Ross. Super <laughs> excited to be here. And actually, uh, Joel and I actually co-founded it together. Well, I'm sure we'll share more of that journey here in a second. Uh, but yeah, we're super excited to be here today. I was raised in Los Angeles, uh, born by artificial insemination, grew up in a lesbian household. So I had no grid for God. But how many know that God is using those in the darkest, hopeless, godless situations? And so just super excited to be here today and represent California. Wow. Yeah, I'm Joel and uh, just have a heart for my generation, love Jesus. And I'm a worship leader, uh, songwriter, preacher of the gospel. And we've just been seeing God do amazing things out on the West, West Coast here. So honored to be on here and talk about what's going on. You know, I would love to hear a little bit more about your guys' testimonies because <laughs> you yeah. don't hear, uh, Ross, you don't hear yours very much often. Um, but, you know, Corey Ten Boom, uh, during the World War II, uh, she hid Jews. And, you know, one of the things that she said was, no pit is so deep where God's love is deeper still. Mm, wow. Yep. So you guys have a movement. It's called California Will Be Saved. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, it really started for us, I think, years ago, but um, in the last couple of years, God just gave us this assignment to do something here in California, and, you know, I think we all we all know we, we came through such an interesting season in world history with the pandemic and lockdowns and all this stuff, um, and it was cool because both, like, individually for Ross and I... Um, we felt this charge from the Lord, like we've got to rise up in this hour and we've got to do something, you know, I can't just shrink back in my room anymore and twiddle my thumbs and hope things turn around for the better. We knew there was a, a, a plan of action that the Lord was, was inviting us into. And so um, we had this dream. My friend had this dream that really catalyzed a lot of our journey. And in short, in the dream, we were gathered together on the coast of California we were worshiping Jesus, and during the worship, the ground began to shake like an earthquake, and Jesus appeared to us in the dream, and he brings my friend down to the edge of the water, and he asked him, like, do you hear the sound of the water, almost as if to ask, like, do you see what's about to come to California and the nation, um, and the ground began to shake again, but my friend said Jesus told him in the dream three things. He said, the battle on the land of California has already been won. The ground has been prepared, and now is the time for the reins of my spirit. And when he spoke those words, the ground shook a second time, and he looked to the Pacific Ocean and saw a massive tsunami wave coming from the ocean, and it flooded the whole city. Um, and, and he said he woke up early in the morning just shaking under the power of God, and he sent me the dream. And um, he said, Joel, I know that wave was symbolic of a wave of God's spirit that's coming to our nation. You know, obviously a, a tsunami can be very detrimental in the natural, um, but I think there's something about in the, in the spiritual sense, the tsunami wave, it's all consuming, right? And it's powerful and it and it um, brings refreshing. <laughs> and so um, that really catalyzed us. That was the same kind of language that brought me out here in 2018. These promises of like waves of his glory, waves of his spirit washing over California, you know, washing over the nation. And uh, that catalyzed us. I asked my friend, do you know where we were in this dream geographically? He said, Huntington Beach. And so <laughs> we showed up, you know, a few weeks later and I'm like, guys, we just got to do the dream. We just got to dare to believe in this hour that God's going to raise something up, he, you know, in the midst of the darkness and the corruption and all the chaos, like there's a wave of his presence that's going to push back that wave of darkness and we got to do the dream, you know? And so we show up at Huntington beach and, 
you know, we don't know what's what's going to happen. We try to get the word out, but we don't really have a lot of resources or following or anything like that. And we get there and there's three, three or 400 people that show up right there at the pier. And we just start worshiping Jesus and preaching the gospel. And we give an altar call and people wow. are just walking off the beach, like repenting, getting right with the Lord. They're, the altar is just full of people like receiving salvation and healing and deliverance. We baptize a couple dozen people in the ocean right there that weekend. And so that really kind of was the start of this whole thing. We, you know, one step at a time, right? We knew though that the Lord was confirming our steps. And so ever since then, that was a that was the summer of 2021, actually. And so ever since then, we've just been going from city to city. Right um, in the midst preaching of COVID. The gospel. Yeah, exactly. It's still like COVID restrictions and all the craziness at that time. And um, But in each city we, we went to, like God was just showing up as we just brought these two simple things of worship and the proclamation of the gospel. And so we've just been on a rampage since then, last two years, um, just going after California. So. Oh my gosh. Uh, Ross, how about you? How, how, how did you and Joel link up? Yeah. So it was a whole journey for us, but I actually was in San Diego during 2020 and uh, I would, I honestly wasn't walking with God. Like I didn't renounce my faith. I just was in a season of being mad at him and blaming and bitterness and so 2020 comes, the Holy Spirit speaks to me like, Ross, if you don't stand now, you never will. So I have this moment, you know, we've all had these moments, just tears and weeping and repenting before God. And I just said, God, whatever you want to do, you know, with my life, use it. I just ask that you give me, give me people, give me people that I can do this life with. And so uh, I walked into this tent revival uh, in Orange County and I, I saw Joel, he was leading worship on the stage and I just knew there was something that between us that we just we just kind of needed to connect. And so I remember that night we connected. It was it was a really brief moment, actually. It wasn't anything too wild. And uh, we just became friends and we started chatting and we just found out really quickly that we both, like Joel said, have this burning passion for California. And so we're like, what do we do? And we're like, let's worship. Let's preach the gospel and let's see what happens. And then, you know, Joel receives that dream. We show up at Huntington Beach, and now here we are. Next month, actually, in a couple of weeks, will be our two-year anniversary. Wow. And we've just been traveling California. You know, this is how this is what we've been saying. Wherever California goes, the world goes. And there's so much revival history. It's like our yeah. land is yeah. rich. There's this there's this DNA in California, full of the spirit and moves of God from just yep. the past 100 years. Now we're not even talking a while ago. We're talking recent few, recent memory. And so we're just believing, well, God, if you did it once, you did it twice, you're definitely going to do it again. You're just looking for people who will partner with you. And like Joel said, we see the narrative, man. Like we see the narrative of darkness and heaviness and depression and yeah. all these things. But there is a narrative happening that the world does not see or maybe the world does not know. And that's the story of Jesus and the narrative of what's happening in heaven. And so as we go to these cities, what, what we do is the Lord gave us two weapons, so to speak, worship. It opens up the atmosphere. People's hearts become softened to yep. who God really is. Yeah. And then two, we preach the gospel and people are in that mm -hmm. position to receive. And now they see Jesus rightly and they surrender their life to him. And so that's what we've been doing for the last two years. You know, that's phenomenal. Um, it gives me goosebumps you know, listening to this because you guys are right. Um, I'm part of a group and we go up and lobby in Sacramento against a lot of these really bad bills that are pro-abortion, want to take parents' rights away and, and all this. And we go and pray and we intercede, but we actually talk to legislators. And as soon as you get off the plane in Sacramento, you feel it's completely different. Like there is yeah. something big principality in Sacramento, but you also sense that God is truly moving over there as well. And yeah. so do you guys do this full time? Yeah. Okay. Tell, yeah. tell me a little bit about that because it looks like you guys have dropped everything to follow Jesus. <laughs> yeah, it's uh it's a, it's a cost for sure, but uh, I always kind of joke around. Like, I don't know what else I would do. Um, I don't, I don't know if I'm really passionate about anything else than igniting worship and 
music and, you know, ultimately seeing my generation come to know Jesus, but also know their calling and know the destiny over their life, you know, and be activated into um, God's plan for their life. And so it's full time, both for, for Ross and I. And uh, we're just like full-time missionaries to California, essentially, and mm. um, just giving our lives to see, you know, I think we we have so many prophetic dreams and words and yeah. things God has spoken over us that um, I just know it's it's time to go after those promises, you know, like we're living in such an interesting time in world history and uh, we, we're not even promised tomorrow. And no. so I know that I felt like, man, we've just got to go for it. We've got to believe these words. We've got to try stuff. We've got to, you know, get wild again. We've got to get that grit again and just get out in the streets and sing and declare God's goodness and, um, you know, believe for the signs and wonders and miracles and go after healing and, and deliverance and salvation. And so it's fun, man. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of counting the costs. Um, but it's so rewarding. It's it's so fun. I think the last two years of my life have been like the most fun, the most crazy journey. You know, I don't regret a single thing. And so it's so much fun. You know, California will be saved. Um, you just kind of get that sense from the Lord. And yeah. I remember I was at a revival and the speaker was talking about California. And then there was worship songs about California, how there was gold in California's past. But there's spiritual yeah. gold that needs to be mined right now. And it was just like, wow. yes, Lord, you're completely right. That what you do yeah. here in California sets the tone for the U.S., which sets the tone for the entire world. And speak, you guys are called here. Why, why called here? How come, you know, most Christians in California, we have the great exodus. Gavin Newsom is kind of like the U-Haul salesperson of the year. And so they've all left <laughs> to go to other states. But God has said, I want you guys here. Why do you think guys think that is? Why haven't you left just for a nice, easy life, you know, in a red state? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think I want to make a few things clear. You know, we don't judge people who left. Like some people, the Lord told them leave. So it's like, Completely. bless you. But yes. I think God also, like we see this throughout scripture, there's different personalities <laughs> of different Bible characters and God raises certain people with this, this desire in them to be the one who stands in the gap. Now, every Christian should stand in the gap in, in, in one area or the other, but there's some people where it's like, I, I can remember from my earliest days. I mean, I lived in SoCal my entire life. I was always drawn to California. Uh, I always loved being known as a California kid. I always loved being known as someone who goes to the beaches and eats acai bowls. You know, like California has always Same. resonated Same. with me just as a person, <laughs> you know? And so when the Lord started speaking to me about not just the natural, but the spiritual significance, it was like it resonated with the deepest part of who I was. And we all know that those deep places of our heart, of our spirit, of our soul, those are from the Lord. Yes. And so I would say, if the Lord told you to leave or tells you to go somewhere, you obey him above everybody else. But for those who don't sense that peace, it's like, maybe the Lord is saying to you, I have given you and I've crafted you in a way where you are supposed to be the solution in one of the most darkest, hopeless places in America. Amen. Because the truth is, though it's dark, though it's heavy, like we said earlier, there is a spiritual gold here. And who are those willing? Listen, I, I wasn't alive during that time, obviously, but I know when you're mining for gold, it is not easy. It is laborious. It takes time. It takes effort. It is not a one day type of thing. And so why do we think, not saying everyone thinks like this, but sometimes we think, well, if it doesn't happen in a, year, in a week, in a year, in, a, in 10 years, well, maybe I missed it. It's like, no, maybe God is calling you to do something that's so much bigger beyond yourself that you you need him and you need others to do it. Yes. And so I've just always felt this call in my heart, like California is the place where I'm supposed to be. It's the Amen. place I'm passionate about, I care about. And to be honest, I enjoy going to the streets and destroying the devil. And so I'm like, let's keep going. <laughs> yes. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Just you to know. echo that really quick, like, I think it comes down to what God is, is speaking. Right. And I know there's going to be people on here that you, you feel the same call. There's going to be others that you're called other places, you know, and that's so awesome. Um, 
I know for me, like the Lord made it so clear. There's something about California, you know, there's something about this place. I don't understand it even fully, but God loves this state and he loves this, this region so much. And we've, you know, we were just talking about this, but you know, we've seen it throughout history that when something happened here, when the Lord poured out his spirit here, it was not just for this, you know, small area. It, it was, it was something for even the nations and the ends of the earth. Yes. And we see that through, you know, the Zusa street revival and yep. Jesus people movement, how these revivals just spreaded and um, it was not just contained here. And so I don't know, man, I just like, God has given me such a vision and a promise for this state that, you know, if, if the church can unite and we can really understand the hour we're living in and we go after this thing, like we could witness something historic. Um, and, and it, it could be something that reaches even the rest of the nation and beyond that. And so I think that's kind of the prophetic insight. Like there's a, I see it on the horizon, you know, I see that wave coming. I see that tsunami wave on the verge of just crashing over our shores again. And that's, what's really compelling me. I know our team like to keep fighting, to keep striking the ground, you know, like just yes. keep going. There's a greater wave. There's a greater narrative um, that God's releasing. So. Amen. Amen. The gates of hell will not overcome. Yeah. Because when the church is on the offensive, when the church gets out of the four square, four square walls of the church, hey, that's when the devil is like, oh no. We're yeah. He's totally fine with us singing and preaching like fire from the pulpit as long as we stay inside the church. Yeah. But when we leave, <laughs> that is when the kingdom of darkness begins to tremble. So true, bro. Now so you true. guys have a huge event coming up on Sunday in Hollywood, right? Yes. Tell me a little bit about that. When is it happening? Where exactly is it happening? And what type of challenges have you faced with this? Yeah. Ross, you want to take a stab at it first? Yeah. So <laughs> I still can't believe I'm saying this. Joel and I are like in this like constant swirl, so to speak of like, wow, this is really happening. Like we believe God obviously, but sometimes you, you don't fully understand it until you see it in front of you. And so what started is kind of honestly a little bit of a joke. I was serious, but also kind of joking. Yeah. And we were thinking, we were like, okay, God's doing something special in LA. Like where can we go next? Like we, this was not on our radar. This was not planned. We literally planned this two weeks ago. And I, I said, what if we shut down Hollywood Boulevard? And wow. it sounds so out there. You're like, okay, Ross, like chill a little bit, man. Like I love your faith, but like chill out. Well, we decided to try it and the police department has been so open and they were like, listen, we're going to work with you on this. We officially got a permit to shut down Hollywood Boulevard right in front of the Chinese theater on the nice. Hollywood Walk of Fame. So talk about going to the most. Yes, it's dark there, but it's also the most influential city probably in the entire world. And yeah. so we're going to be there this Sunday. Uh, July 30th at 5 p.m. We're going to worship. We're going to preach the gospel. We're going to baptize people. Uh, we actually have a segment dedicated to human trafficking. I'll let Joel share a little bit more of the prophetic insight as well. But there's just so many moving pieces that God is bringing together at this specific moment for Hollywood. And here's what I want to say before I toss it over to Joel. This is Joel's scripture. That he, it's in Isaiah, but it talks about can a nation be saved in a day? Well, my question is, can a city be saved in a day? And so we're believing that as we go, we're going to lift up the name of Jesus and we will see Hollywood shifted and saved in one day. You know, Joel, before you go, uh, I just got done reading Jonah and Jonah goes mm -hmm. throughout the city of Nineveh and yeah. God's spirit moves and they are saved in one day and God holds off wow. judgment. And what you guys are doing, it's kind of like Paul going to Mars Hill. The most influential place of where yeah. you're supposed to be tearing down those high places yeah. anyways go ahead man oh no thanks for bringing that up that's so good um yeah i think you just got to try stuff sometimes you know you just got to dream with the lord and um that's the place we've been in we just did two events earlier this month in different parts of la and a lot of different outreaches and pop-up worship moments kind of intermixed <laughs> Um, and we just saw so much fruit, man. Like God was just moving like crazy salvation, deliverance, healing, you know, we're baptizing people across the city 
And after that second event, I was like, man, I feel like we're supposed to keep doing something in this city, you know, our, our, our home city of Los Angeles. Yeah. Uh, I feel like we can't just stop, you know, we kind of had our whole schedule planned out earlier this year and this was not on our radar, but, but I was like, man, there's something going on right now in LA. And so that's when we started to just kind of brainstorm, where could we go? You know, what's the location God, what are you saying? You know, we want to be in tune with, that's kind of been our whole journey is just what is God saying? And we want to do that, you know? And so we kind of felt this pull to Hollywood, you know, um, I just watched that sound of freedom film yes. and was just super charged and, and challenged personally, like, what can we do to make a difference, you know? And, and, you know, you got to understand, like, this is our mission to save California. And what does that look like? That looks like fighting against these demonic agendas of the enemy, right? Like there's so many different areas to fight, but this thing, you know, I watched that film. I was like, man, there's something we got to do right now. And so Hollywood, obviously they wouldn't even show the film uh, for a number of years there because of whatever reason. Right. And it finally gets out and now it's blowing up. Um, but, it, but beyond that, it feels like there's this heightened awareness right now across the globe um, of this issue. And ultimately what it is, is I think it's the exposing of darkness Yes. And that's going to lead to repentance. It's going to lead to hearts opening up to Jesus because he's our only hope of, of ending these kinds of issues. It's, it's either God shows up and he breaks in and cuts the head of the serpent off or we're just, we're hopeless down here, you know? And so that's what I'm sensing right now. I feel like there is an openness right now and a, an awareness for the gospel to go forth. Um, so we are going to go after this issue. We want to bring awareness. We've got friends coming that have worked in this field of fighting human trafficking, of rescuing children. Um, and so we're inviting them to come. We have an amazing um, testimony coming, a girl that's coming. who's going to share her story of actually being rescued out of that lifestyle um, and testify. And we're just going to pray, man. We're going to invite the healing you know, Jesus to come and minister. And we're going to pray that God would just end this issue in the middle of a city like Hollywood, where there's so much of this going on. I mean, I've heard stories of even people just on the streets there on Hollywood Boulevard on sunset, just getting picked up and, yeah. and being trafficked right yeah. out in the open. And so, you know, we want to go in and be the light, you know, what do we do? We don't have it all figured out, but we've got to do something you know, we've, we're going to worship. I, I believe that's going to break things off. We're going to invite people to know Jesus. That's yeah. ultimately the the answer. Um, and then we're going to pray, like, God, end this thing. And um, so that's a little bit of the assignment for Sunday. I can't believe it. We're two days away. Um, this is obviously a last-minute thing. Like Ross said, I think two weeks ago, this was kind of all uh, bubbling up. And we were thinking through what we could do. And it's just come together. It's just supernatural. I've never sensed. I mean, we normally mobilize for events for a month or two or three months out. And um, there's been more momentum than ever on any event we've ever done wow. on this thing right now for Hollywood. And so I don't know what's about to happen, but we're just going in faith. Um, we're, we're shutting down the street. We're going to release the sound of worship, preach the gospel, and just believe that God would break in. Um, that his presence would be felt all across the whole city, on the neighborhoods, the the street corners, and, uh, the surrounding areas, that God's presence would just be wow. seen, felt, and heard. And we would come into a, like a one big corporate encounter for the sake of California. So, You know, it's amazing what God's doing. Uh, the day before, there's actually there'd be a huge protest and prayer and worship night um, right outside of the DuPont abortion clinic. Yes. Will or will not be open. I'll be up. there actually. Yeah. Perfect. We I'll will see be you. There. I yeah. will see you guys there. Let's um, go. I will see you guys there tomorrow night. And then yeah. you got this happening the very next day. So absolutely amazing. And I, I wrote down some notes while you were talking. Um, Joel, your dream. It's, it's so funny how God works. Um, I just interviewed Ben Pauling. He's an actor and writer and him and his brother uh, basically had a dream and mm -hmm. about child sex trafficking. And yeah. now they're trying to make a movie about it. And what I told him was, Hey, in these last days, what the, what does the prophet Joel say? That your yeah. old men will see visions and your young men will dream dreams. And I will yeah. pour out my spirit on all mankind. Yeah. And, uh, 
What's also very interesting is you guys are doing this right in the middle of the writer and actor strike. So yeah. it is like lined it up perfectly for the timing of saying, Hey, I shut down Hollywood so that everybody can get back to me. Yeah. Wow. Perfect timing guys. Yeah. It's wild, bro. And we, we found this out later too, but United Nations has instated like a, a child trafficking awareness day on June and 30th. Lo and behold, or July 30th, it's July 30th of That's all funny. days. Wow. You know, we found that out Amazing. after the fact too. So like you're saying, it's, God is just doing something right now. I think yeah. both Ross and I are just like along for the ride. You know, we just want to kind of be present and steward it. <laughs> just pray for my voice. I've been singing too much. Um, we just kind of want to steward this thing and, um, you know, say, God, here we are. Just do whatever you want to do. We're here for it. And um, we'll, we'll believe with you, you know, so Man. it's great what's going on. There are no coincidences with the Lord. Well, guys, what type of finances are needed? How can people help? Where can they find you guys? Where can they give? Yeah. Um, well, this is, this is the biggest event we've ever done. And, um, we felt like we got to do it right. And, uh, we're, you know, we're going through all of this work to shut down the street and everything. We're like, we got to do this right. We want to show up with the right gear and the right staging and equipment. And, um, so we've got a ton of things to pay for everything from staging to a crew, to sound rigs, the permits, fencing, um, promotion and banners and, sure. um, uh, so we're raising fifty thousand dollars um, to cover. This is just all encompassing. That's everything from everything I just mentioned there. And so I think right now I got to double check, but it looks like this morning we were at like seventeen thousand. So we've got about what thirty thousand plus to go in the next couple of days here, um, just to cover everything. And so you can go to our social media. Um, we have Venmo. We got Cash App. It's just at C A will be saved. Um, but it's online. It's on our website. We got all that info on there and we're keeping updates on there as we're raising funds. Uh, that would bless us tremendously. So yeah, yeah we'll make sure to Just put one more that. thing too. Go ahead. Yeah. We also have a text to give number. There's been some warfare earlier in the week with it, but it is back online, I believe. So Perfect. if you text, yeah, if you, if you have a, you know, a bigger contribution you want to give to us one, you can write a check out to California will be saved. And just message us on our social media and we'll give you all the uh, info. Or two, you can text the word give. So if you go into your text messages and you type in the word give in the message box, you text it to the number 714-406-1680. I'll say it again. <laughs> text the word give to 714-406-1680 and it'll take you through a little prompt. But yeah, we're super grateful for everybody who's sewn in and everybody who will. It's, it's going to bless us tremendously. Yeah, we'll put all those links and everything that you guys mentioned in the description below so that everybody can uh, you know, have it there as well. Man, well, thank guys, you. thank you so much for coming on. You know, before uh, we sign off, every person I like to interview, um, I always like to give them the mic for a minute and basically say whatever's on their heart. Um, it's kind of like a good sign off, but yeah. I want to, I want to bless you guys and thank you guys so much for coming on and we'll be praying and I'm looking forward to seeing you both, uh, tomorrow night yeah. at the DuPont clinic and, uh, looking forward to what God has in the future. So, uh, Joel, why don't you start and then Ross, you can finish up. Yeah. Thanks, Tim. Thanks for having us, man. Uh, I, I don't know. I think the only thing I'd say is, um, you know, we're not promised tomorrow, James says this life is like a vapor. And so my challenge, I think, to everybody right now, uh, especially young people, is like, man, let's do something crazy. Let's dream with the Lord. God is the best storyteller. He's the best best author. Um, there's a plan. There's a dream on his heart for your life. And um, there's a bigger story that he's writing, you know. And so let's tune into that. Let's dream with him, man. When we graduate on from this temporary life, we're going to look back and say, man, we gave everything we had uh, to bring, to partner with the Lord, to bring redemption, to bring salvation, to rally people into heaven. And so whatever that looks like, I mean, you can join us or do something, join us, but do whatever the Lord's saying It's on your heart. There's a dream, right? And there's a plan. And so um, 
find it, find what that dream is and go after it. I think right now is such a special time in our history where we could really see God do something special. Amen. Yeah, I just keep hearing this phrase over and over, and it's a challenge of my life right now. It's like, and it's a great challenge. It's to whom would I go, to where would I go, and to what would I do? And what I mean by that is, you know, when you follow Jesus and you find that dream that God places on your heart, it's not always going to be rainbows and butterflies every single day of your life. But here's the reality. Where else are you going to go? To whom else are you going to put your trust in? What else would you rather put your hands to than the work of the ministry that God has given you? And so I believe God is looking for people in this hour. You know, in 2020, 2021, everybody got fired up because Gavin Newsom saying these crazy things. The presidential election was wild. But all of a sudden, when we got into 2022 and 2023, where it seems a little bit normal, we can just get back in that normal, mundane flow of life. And I just want to challenge everybody listening, whether now or later, man, don't settle for the normal mundane flow of life. Get into the flow of the Holy Spirit. Get so filled with him that everything else leaves your life. And I think the last thing I'll say is, I hope one thing you hear from what we're saying today is we're living in a significant moment on the earth here in America, here in California, wherever you may be. Would you be willing to break past any apathy, any indifference, any heartbreak, any slander, anything coming against you from the enemy or for, from a person? And would you be willing to say, God, I'm going to pursue you with every ounce of my being. Mm -hmm. And friend, if you can remain in that place, I promise you, God will use your life in ways that you'll never fully be able to comprehend. And so I just encourage you, tap in and stay with the Lord, pursue him and seek him with all you have. It'll be the best decision of your life. Amen. You know, Jesus says to the disciples after a whole bunch of people leave him, you guys are going to go too? And they say, Lord, where else are we going to go? You have the words of eternal life. So there's yeah. nowhere else to go besides Christ. Well, man, God bless you guys. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks, Tim. Appreciate it.